What's going on, U.S. History people? We're back with video number six, Common Sense, the Declaration of Independence and Impacts of the Revolutionary War. So much is happening in this video, and the colonists are going to officially break away and become Americans. So, Mr. Lawrence, please start off telling us about common sense. All right, so let's talk common sense. So this is basic knowledge that people should have. That's what we think of when we think of common sense, or at least we should. But this applies to understanding American colonial history and also the lead up to the American Revolution. So what common sense was, was actually a title of an extremely famous publication of the colonial period leading up to the revolution. It was a pamphlet published in 1776 by, the, by a guy by the name of Thomas Paine. Some like to call him T. Paine. And what the, was the focus of the publication of this pamphlet? And again, this is not a book. This is a pamphlet. So it's a smaller, compact piece of writing where it can be spread around and printed very quickly. And the focus was it really condemned the leadership of King George III, the British monarchy of the time, and really, really called him out and called out the government of how they were mistreating the American colonists. It was so popular throughout the colonies, sold almost 100,000 copies. And at this time, again, this was so popular that this sold over 100,000 copies at the time. In colonial periods, with the technology for printing, this was a really big deal with limited transportation methods through the colonies as well. By today's standards, 100,000 is a lot sold. Back then when you have just a few million people, that's an enormous amount proportionally of the population who bought this pamphlet. So criticizing the British government wasn't unique, but what was unique within Common Sense and Thomas Paine's idea was the idea that what common sense was, was that the Americans would declare its independence. And this was a very radical way of thinking, and it was really a treasonous way of thinking, because again, American colonists at this time were still British citizens. So they're calling for really the overthrow of their governmental system and break away and become independent. So again, 100,000 copies sold, a really big deal. And it was a really big deal because it talked about creating a new form of government within the Americas. So let's take a look at this date, 1776. It's actually January of 1776. This is going to have a huge influence on the Declaration of Independence. We know this was written in July, adopted on July 4th, 1776. The purpose of this was to announce that the 13 North American British colonies, New England, Middle and Southern colonies, were now independent. They no longer were under the rule of Great Britain. This is really a breakup letter to the world that the colonies are now their own independent nation. Now the primary author was Thomas Jefferson. He did write it with John Adams and Benjamin Franklin, but he gets all the credit and he was only 33 years old when he wrote that. I kind of feel like a failure that I haven't done anything. I'm older than him. Is that me or do you feel that way too, Mr. Warren? No, it's, I think, you, yeah, that's a failure. That's a lot a failure. of, you, you haven't started a revolution by 33. You're not doing it right then. So this was approved by the Continental Congress, the Second Continental Congress, on July 4th, 1776. That's why we celebrate Independence Day on that date. The Declaration of Independence in three parts is a theory of government. Here's what the government should be, a good government should be. The second part is, here's a list of things that King George III or KG3 has done bad. So the first part is, here's what a good government is. Second part is, yeah, KG3, you're really not doing a good job of having that good government. And the third part is we're formally breaking away from you. We're no longer under your leadership. How is King George III going to view this? Probably not very well. All right, so continuing our study of the Declaration of Independence, some other ideas we have to be aware of is one, the Declaration of Independence, as Mr. Norris said, it's almost like a breakup letter. It was an explanation of why the Americans would want their independence. We weren't doing this just because we had nothing better to do as Americans. We had reasons and justifications for it. So that was the purpose of writing this document and providing it to the rest of the world to know why the Americans were going to pursue independence. Not all Americans, though, did support independence. And Mr. Norris, you know what these people were called? Loyalists. Yeah, so actually the majority of Americans at first were not really big supporters of independence. Yes, Americans had issues with the way the government was interacting. The British government was interacting with British citizens in the Americas. And yeah, there were some issues. Maybe we could try and work those out, gain representation in Parliament. But some, um, several Americans felt that, you know, going the way of independence was a little too extreme. So there was still a good amount of Americans who did not support it. And we'll see once the war actually starts, there will be a good number of Americans who will actually support the British cause at that time period. So there are some big ideas that we need to know from the Declaration and the actual document itself. 
One is those enlightenment ideas. We've talked about them earlier, that they are going to be a huge influence on the thinking of many American founders, specifically Thomas Jefferson. And we'll see his famous phrase within the document talks about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, where he kind of stole from who? John Locke. That's right. We kind of just take out property, you know, and we replace it with happiness. Also, we talked about the consent of the governed, that idea of a social contract as well, that the citizens, the people who live within that government have a say, and they really allow the leadership to govern the way that they feel um, it should be. All right, so what is the impact of the American Revolution on different groups? This is very important to understand how various groups were affected. So when we think about women, women played a large role in the revolution itself. We look at these pictures here, we see women making uniforms and clothing for the Revolutionary War, and you also see women fighting in the war itself. A very famous woman was Molly Pitcher, who fought in the front lines against the British. So women provided support to the revolutionary cause, whether it was moral support or making goods or fighting. They would not receive more rights, however, under the new independent American government. When we get to the Articles of Confederation and the Constitution, women do not get the same rights as men in the beginning. Even though John Adams' wife wrote him a very fam famous letter saying, remember the ladies, don't forget about us when you're writing this new document, women do not receive equal rights. Now, Native Americans were kind of split. Some tribes supported the Americans, other tribes supported the British. So you see Native American tribes fighting on both sides, and they will continue to face challenges as the Americans move west. This has been a theme that we have talked a lot about so far in this course, and will continue to, that as America expands west, Native Americans will be pushed off their land. All right, so continuing to look at impacts of certain groups within the Americas as a result of a revolution, we look at African Americans as well. And as we've talked about within the colonial period, African Americans are really going to be faced with the institution of slavery, and this will continue through the revolution. Um, one thing we have to understand is that there were African Americans who did actually fight within in the revolution. Um, groups, as a result of the revolution, will begin to speak out against slavery in the new nation. We talk about these Enlightenment ideals. And some founders and some Americans believe, yes, we're fighting for independence, we're fighting for Enlightenment ideas, but yet we still are holding other human beings in this horrible institution of slavery. So people will begin to speak out against slavery more openly. Also, northern states will begin to outlaw slavery once the American colonists start to gain independence. And we'll see a movement to end the slave trade. Now, not end the institution of slavery, but specifically end the importation of slaves, which we'll talk more about with the founding of the new constitution. Also looking at the economy, we see how workers are going to be impacted as a result of the American Revolution. We'll see individual states will control their own economy. So once the United States does gain its independence, we'll see 13 separate states acting almost as 13 separate countries and running their own economies. They'll have their own forms of currency. It'll be a, um, a very difficult system um, to get all the same, all the colonies on the same page, or excuse me, all the states now on the same page. We'll see the entrenchment of regional ec economics, so things we talked about in earlier videos where the North will have a very specific economy based on um, shipping, on trade, on fishing, where in the South we see much more of a focus on cash crops and plantation systems. And finally, we'll see little support for centralized government programs and transportation systems from the national economy. The national economy, once we gain independence, will be very weak because that is really the focus of why we fought a revolution against a strong central government that was the British crown. Okay, let's end with a quick recap. We have Common Sense, authored by T. Payne, Know What It Called For, Declaration of Independence in three parts, Know All Three Parts, and how did the Revolutionary War impact women, Native Americans, and African Americans? Be able to identify and explain how each of these groups was, were impact, impacted. All right, look forward to see you back here for video number seven, the Articles of Confederation and the Constitutional Convention. This might be the biggest, most important video that we have covered so far. Thanks for watching. Best of luck and have a good day.